All right, I think we're ready. Thank you for joining us. We're so excited to have you here on this snowy morning. Uh, first, we want to say thank you so much for all the work that you do to support students and families. Um, welcome to the first of Westminster College's three part series on meaningful student experiences. My name is Alexa Price and I'm an assistant director of admissions here at Westminster. A bit about us, Westminster is a private liberal arts college located in Salt Lake City, Utah. Westminster's devoted faculty, purpose-driven academic programs, and distinctive location foster inclusive engagement, student-centered learning, and opportunities to explore. And today, we'll be discussing the Westminster Expedition, a semester-long tour of the American West. We're thrilled to have faculty trip leaders and alumni on our panel this morning. They're here to share their experiences and insight about the Westminster Expedition. We want to acknowledge that you're taking time out of your work day to spend some time with us, and we really appreciate that. If you have any questions for either myself or our faculty here today or any of our panelists, there's a Q&A feature on the right side of your screen where you can ask us anything. As our time is short, I'll turn it over to Dr. Jeff Nichols. Uh, thank you and good morning. Um, I'm Jeff Nichols. I teach history here at Westminster, and uh, I'm a Western US uh, specialist, social, cultural, environmental history. Um, the expedition has gone uh, uh, in 2017, and we have another one planned uh, this fall. We were going to go uh, uh, fall 2020, but of course that had to be canceled. And with us here, we have my uh, teaching partner, Brent Olson, uh, and we have some participants from the, the, the first expedition, Madeline Hummel, Eliza Clark, Kara Kornhauser, and Bridger Layton. Um, so just very quickly, uh, some of the, the uh, specifics of the trip. It's a academic road trip around the West. We went uh, 82 days, I believe, in 2017, and we plan to do just about the same this time, although we may skip the break in the middle. Uh, drove 10,000 miles with 14 students, two faculty and a program assistant. Um, went to national parks, national forests, native nations, uh, dam sites, um, a whole variety of places, mine, uh, uh, mining towns. Um, so I We'll turn it over here to Brent Olson to give you a few more details. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Um, my name is Brent Olson. I teach environmental studies um, at Westminster, primarily from a social science perspective, but we really work from an interdisciplinary lens, and so um, we cover a lot of ground. Um, as Jeff was saying, um, on the trip, we take students out onto the road to, to see the American West and to talk to people out there. Um, along the way, our goals really are to build this traveling, this rolling community of students um, and faculty and, and the program assistant um, who live together. We camp most nights, we eat, we cook each other meals, um, and we think about the environmental and social, social issues that abound throughout the West. Um, whether that is in terms of environmental conflict, whether that's management of public lands, whether that is indigenous issues and life on, on reservations and what that means for native peoples. Um, really the goals are to, um, to give a broad perspective of the West um, and the environmental challenges that the West faces. Um, and the mo perhaps maybe the most important part of that is um, really to introduce people introduce the students to the amazing people doing the amazing work in the West. I think we yeah. um, over the course of 82 days we had uh, we spoke to 62 speakers, um, sometimes more than one a day um, and, and and all of those speakers sort of offered their perspective and, and talked about the work that they did um, making the American West the unique place it is. Um, so the goal is to build this community to talk to amazing people and then ultimately to help students find their own place in the world um, and, and figure out how they might live into that and grow into it and what that's going to mean for them down the road. Um, 
and and that's really what we're all about. I think, but the best way to hear about what we're all about is to hear what students have to say about it. So I'm going to pass it off to Eliza Clark um, to tell stories, and we'll just hear some student stories about about what the trip was like from their perspective. Eliza. Yeah. Hello. Good morning. My name's Eliza. Um, I just graduated from Westminster this December for environmental civics. Um, I was super grateful to go on the expedition. I'm a very hands on learner, so to be able to be like put into a place and live through experience and learn through experience was probably the best way I could have learned in school. Um, I was also really grateful it happened so early on in my education so I could see how the rest would potentially unfold. Um, I also love the expedition because I grew up on the East Coast, so to be able to learn about the West through living in it and like meeting the people who live here and the people that make the West the place that it is was just incredibly beneficial and really made me learn about this place that I'm living in now. So um, yeah, the expedition was by far my best experience at school um, and I'm really glad that people get to go next semester because they're going to have a great time. Um. I'll go next. I'm Kara Kornhauser. I graduated in 2019 and I did the expedition the same year as everyone else in 2017 um, and I'm now a graduate student at uh, University of Alaska Fairbanks. Um, the expedition, I agree with Eliza on everything she said. I It was a very important experience for me and it came at a time in my junior year when I was feeling a little bit tired of school and just ready to ready to meet people and do real life things and the expedition just really energized me and allowed me to meet people who were actually doing work that was interesting to me and were showing showed us what the possibilities were and what we could do um, it also just expanded my perspectives of the american west and the people and the places that we got to visit um, hearing from so many different people and their perspectives was really important for me moving forward. Um, and I, I really appreciated the experience that Jeff and Brent put together for us. We got to meet um, so many people that just cha I think changed our lives uh, for the better. And we also had a lot of fun doing it. I think, um, for, at least for me, I learned how to work with a group of people for a long period of time, which are skills that you don't really get elsewhere. So. Um, we, we became a little family and, and I really miss everyone from it. And I'm excited for new people to get to experience the expedition as well. Hi all, uh, my name is Madeline. I went on the expedition my sophomore year of college and I graduated from Westminster in May of 2020. Um, and I have to agree with everybody that expedition was an extremely transformative uh, period of my life and it really set me up to take advantage of the rest of my college experience. Um, yeah, meeting people from all over the American West was extremely insightful. It has kept me curious all these years after. It's kept me questioning all these years after. Um, I always know that there's a million sides to one single story um, and that listening to others is probably the biggest key of activism and it's just been it set me up for success and yeah it you know I made all these connections with my peers and mentors at the college and yeah it I have only positive things to say. It was really eye opening and I don't think there's a program similar to it. All right, my name's Bridger. Um, I studied environmental studies at Westminster and graduated in uh, 2018. And so I was a senior the year that I went um, I think I was one of only a few seniors on the trip, um, which I think was actually a very cool time to do it. Um, it was really valuable. I'll sort of echo what Kara was saying to see all of these people actually doing work 
in the environmental field um, because it's easy to sort of you know take a career prep course um, do some googling read about what environmental work looks like um, and i think it's a different thing to actually see who's doing it why they're doing it where they're doing it um, and so it was really valuable for me to see all of the various ways that i could go make a difference and also make a living and so from sort of a career planning perspective um, i think it was it was really wonderful um, and then the other thing that I found really valuable is, you know, I knew I was about to have to head out into post-grad world. And so I tried to frequently ask people sort of how they arrived, where they arrived. And, you know, I learned pretty quickly that no one had a linear path, <laughs> that all of these people arrived to the, you know, these jobs that meant a lot to them in places that meant a lot to them, sort of by, you know, by going one decision at a time um, and at every junction choosing what felt the best and so it was really sort of grounding to hear <laughs> to hear that from so many different people um, they were doing good work so that i could sort of enter the world with a little bit less fear and a little bit more comfort in knowing that hey i'm going to take this one step at a time and that's actually what careers look like um, as opposed to sort of feeling like oh i need to figure out exactly what my track is and get on it now um, so i think that that gave some really cool perspective um, and then the other thing that I think was really awesome about, you know, sort of connecting to all of these people in their home space was that it was it was a much more intimate experience than just reading about an environmental issue um, in a given place. You were you were talking to people about their home. Um, and so it was really amazing to see how connected people get to their landscapes and to their communities and to see what community does um, in the realm of what Madeline was talking about, where you know people may have very different values in a given place, but all love it just the same. Um, and so it's really cool to see, you know, what's happening in the West in the collaborative space, where people that have different values around, you know, politics or environmentalism could still find common ground and you know sort of make a plan for how to how to make the most of the future. In the places that they love and live and so that was that was really powerful and then the last thing i'll mention is that making connections along the way was really wonderful um that you know the example in my life and i think there are other examples for other folks um but there's a, a little town in washington that we you know spent about a week you know in and around and met a few people there and there's a really cool organic agriculture scene in the area and i i think organic ag at a small scale has a lot of power to to solve a lot of a lot of issues and so i you know it's something i was really excited about was able to make some connections to people in this town and then fast forward two summers later i was able to you know basically live across the street from a farm that we had volunteered on at the expedition you know staying with people that i had met on that trip um and learning things that you know i think will ad advance my career in the future as i continue to sort of think about you know the food space and i you know i currently manage an organic garden on westminster's campus so i think there's sort of a thread that started with the expedition that has run through um, a lot of really meaningful experiences um, that you know still i still hold with me to this day so that's pretty pretty awesome and yeah, I'm excited that it's that it's about to happen again for some folks. So, Brent, Brent you're muted. Is not going to do that. Um, <laughs> Uh, we're, it looks like we're going to move on to the Q&A um, portion of the of this right now, and, um, and and we've got a couple great questions in the in the chat, and I'll take the first one, which is about um, who the program is available for, and then also costs for the program. Um, the program is designed for um, sophomores through seniors, so people in their second through fourth or fifth year, depending on um, um, how things look. Uh, for them, um, the goal is to run the program every three years or so. So everyone coming through Westminster gets gets a shot at, at going on the trip. And so, so it should be available to most people as they work their way through that. Um, and we've had, um, had a bunch of sophomores take it. We've had some seniors on the trip. A lot of the students tend to be juniors. Um, 
and uh, but but I think there's plenty of room in the trip for for that whole thing. In terms of costs, the cost for the trip is um, currently six thousand eight hundred dollars, which sounds like a lot up front. Um, but that's really all inclusive. We used to joke that um, that it covers everything except laundry, but I think we ended up giving away quarters for laundry as well um, along the trip. And so um, the goal is to keep things affordable um, and, and accessible to students. Uh, that $6,800 is essentially what room and board for a semester would cost. And because it's a Westminster trip, all of the student aid that they get for Westminster programs and for being at Westminster um, also gets applied to this to the trip and then we have some additional need-based aid um, available for students on the trip as well um, so so that costs can vary a little bit depending upon that need-based aid but the sort of sticker price is is sixty eight hundred dollars all inclusive food transportation park fees guest speaker fees laundry uh hotel rooms when we're in hotels really everything that we do is, is covered in snacks for the vans everything is covered in that um, Jeff, do you want to tackle the next question about, um, and Maddie, maybe you want to jump in too, about um, how activism is sort of addressed on the on the course and how we how we work through activism. Maddie, how about you start and then Jeff can fill in some blanks. Sure. Yeah, um, I'm happy to talk about this. I feel like it's it's that's an interesting question because I feel like activism is incorporated into a lot of the like topics that we discussed um, a lot of the places we visit I remember you know a great example is we went to Bears Ears when it was like right in the height of you know being destroyed and there was a lot of you know attention to it and we went there and we talked to local people in the community and it was really like I before had only seen bears ears as like a sticker like protect bears ears and to me I'm like okay that's great protect public lands like nature is good um and that was like my understanding of activism when I first started the trip and then you know being able to talk to different like indigenous leaders or even ranchers or people who are like part of that local community you understand how deeply the landscape connects um to those people's livelihoods, their ancestry, their whole entire being. Um, and that like, you know, protecting bear's ears is not just protecting a chunk of land that's beautiful, but it's sacred, it's, you know, extremely important to the ecosystem, it's important to the livelihoods um, and the well-being of the community. And yeah, it's just everywhere we went, we went to and talking to people who are like actually impacted by policies that are made in Washington or even you know locally um, you you can see how that impacts those communities up close and personal and it really it, it makes you question everything and you know want to fight for the right thing constantly I think the first thing I did when I came back from the expedition was go to a protest and you know I've been trying to make activism my one of my number one priorities you know ever since then um so it is like I would it is incorporated like into the coursework I don't know if it was ever explicitly like this is the activism section but that that's the whole thing it's all a big soup of learning there's no it's not rigid there's no boundaries it's intersectional Yes, and, and just to add to that, I think I think Madeline really described it well. Um, what we uh, thought of the trip as being this enormous broad introduction to a whole great uh, panoply of, of issues, including some ongoing things like, like bears ears or indigenous fishing rights, from which students uh, on the expedition could you know they could get excited about something individually they could they could uh, uh, investigate it further um some of the publicity that 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 we brought we we had a couple of uh, articles written uh, about us while we were on the road and and then after we returned um to segue a, a little bit to to the question here about the course schedule so this we 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 left on the first day of class 
Uh, we loaded up the vans, we loaded up the trailers, um, the trailer uh, took off, came back for, for fall break, went back on the road again and came back just before Thanksgiving. Um, we had four, four credit hour classes. Everybody's uh, um, enrolled in all the classes, quite overlapping as, as Madeline says, uh, uh, intersectional is, is putting it mildly. Um, there, there were rarely times that we could kind of look at each other and go, this is about landscape and meeting. Um, so that, that was one of the four classes, landscape and meaning, environmental conflict and cooperation, the native West and history of public lands. Um, lots of overlap between them. Um, students did small presentations on the way. Um, they kept really uh, elaborate and meticulous uh, uh, journals on a daily basis, talking about what was going on, talking about what they learned. Um, so they got those uh, sort of early exposures and, and, and fairly quick exposure to things and then decide, uh, they, they, they had the opportunity to decide while on the trip what they wanted to take the deep dive into for their final projects. So we came back and then, uh, and then they would do these uh, uh, deeper final projects. Um, can I jump in on this for one second as well? Just waiting. Ah. Um, I, and then I would add sort of the core schedules all blended together. Um, we, the goal in terms of traveling and moving, the goal was um, essentially we set, we set things up and the goal is to, to camp approximately five days a week and stay in hotels two days a week in order to do laundry and catch up. Um, and that also maps on to, um, we tend to spend about five days a week in pretty rural spots, um, and then a couple days a week in slightly bigger bigger towns or cities. Um, and so so it's a mix of, uh, of camping life, although the camping life is pretty luxe. Um, I think, Carrie, you had a cot for most of the trip, didn't you? Yep. Um, uh, um, so it's not, it's not backcountry camping it's really pretty luxurious car camping cooking on cooking on stoves and that kind of thing and then hotels occasionally as well um uh i think we should move on to this um this question of least favorite parts of the trip um who has a least favorite part of the trip <laughs> maddie's smiling I, all big <laughs> i can take it i just have like one that like isn't isn't looking back but i know that during was difficult we were just there was so much to do and so much to see that um we we didn't have a lot of days to relax which looking back like i wouldn't want to have spent days relaxing but uh during it was it was challenging to kind of keep going and it was just a lot of moving and um so uh, to anybody that's considering it, I would just suggest that you're like prepared for a kind of a, a long and very exciting uh, push through. And um, it's it's great though, and it gives you energy. So it's it's kind of a a least favorite and awesome part that it's such it's packed full um, as much as it possibly can be. And looking back, I really appreciate that. Um, but in the moment, it was it was tough at times. Maddie, what, did you, what were you going to say? Yeah, um, I was going to say at first it was actually really difficult for me to live in a small community. Um, you know, I'm I'm pretty like introverted and it was kind of overwhelming. It was a lot. Um, but having a trip leader um, or a program assistant, I guess, was so vital to the program that it actually it, it was a bit rocky at first, like I'm not gonna lie. I was wanting to like find peace and alone time and, but you figure it out after like the first two weeks you get in your groove, you know how to separate yourself when you need to. Um, but it, it could be a lot sometimes being around the same like 17, is that how many there were? Like people all the time. Um, but it's also amazing because then you really get to like intimately know everybody in the group and make really amazing connections and awesome relationships. So it, it is like a bit rocky at first, but um, overall, absolutely worth it. Bridger, do you want to add? 
Sure. I'll wait for the for the live. There we go. Um, yeah, I think if if you send them the the podcast, they'll hear this again. But that my the thing that I have thought I think most frequently looking back is just that for me it was it was pretty hard to yield like control over my daily routine. I guess right that I for three months was not going to get to decide you know really when I woke up or where I went or who I talked to. Um, obviously within the micro I did. They weren't like talk to Maddie today, but uh, but just that so much of so much of it was mapped out for me. Um, and I found that really hard at times because I very much like to sort of build my day, build my routine, make my plan. I, I find comfort in that. Um, and so looking back, I think I would have just sort of yielded to the experience sooner um, and sort of you know said, yeah, I'm, I'm on this boat and it's going really interesting places. Um, but just stop stop worrying about sort of, you know, whether I get to cook the breakfast the way I want to tomorrow, you know, and stop worrying about whether there's going to be enough coffee for me. <laughs> um, some of those little things that are, yeah, are part of my routine when I'm in my own space that disappeared. I think they're worth losing, but that I, I needed to just sort of take a deep breath and understand that that was the nature of the beast. Jeff? Yeah, I just thought I'd wait for the, the red frame. Um, just in terms of the, the, the least favorite, I mean, I, I, I loved it uh, overall. Um, awful lot of time in the van. There's no question. We, 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 drove, we drove a lot. Um, but what that meant was we got to go to so many amazing places and have such really varied experiences. I mean, we went to Port Towns in Washington and built a boat in three days. Built it, finished it, launched it, rode around in it, uh, took photos. Um, so there, there were it, what what the the students have talked about is exactly right in terms of trying to have sort of alone time and and being able to do what what you wanted to do that could be difficult and i think we did get better about saying hey if you need to take off you know or we have a half day uh here go go do what you want to do um but it's you know it's a it's a pretty all-encompassing experience um if i could just jump back in for one second um, I think, yeah, one other sort of piece of advice, I guess, would be that, you know, like we've talked about, it, it was very jam packed. Um, and I think, yeah, if you're like having a day that feels difficult, that just, yeah, not putting so much pressure on yourself to make sure that you're doing every piece of the jam packed thing, um, that, yeah, it's okay to, it's okay to take time for yourself, even though other people are doing things, you know, maybe maybe you skip a hike or maybe you write in your journal tomorrow because you really just need to sleep right now. Um, and that, yeah, I think understanding that at the outset that everyone understands the context. Um, Brett and Jeff aren't going to be reprimanding you because you needed to take some space. Um, and so, yeah, just finding finding that balance and, and advocating for it in your own world. No one's no one's going to be upset about that. Um, I, oh, sweet. I was going to ask a question, but it looks like we might have a new one. Um, other opportunities like this? Yes. I, one of the things I was going to talk about. Um, so we, um, I think at Westminster, we, in, in, in a bunch of programs at Westminster, we've worked really hard to sort of build out these sort of um, place-based field programs. Um, and so uh, in environmental studies and in history and in geology and in the outdoor education and leadership programs um, and in biology and some other programs and hopefully more coming online soon. Um, we've developed a number of programs that range um, from week long trips. So we've got uh, we have a, a week long um, a week long experience where we go to Costa Rica for a week environmental studies and biology to look at conservation practice. Um, we have a number of weekend programs that are like linked to linked to other classes and field programs that go um, somewhere nearby uh, for a weekend. One of the advantages of Westminster is we're four, four and a half hours away from five or six different national parks. 
Um, so there's all kinds of opportunities to go do cultural work or, or, or scientific work within those parks and on those landscapes. Um, geology runs a summer field camp as part of their major that, that is out in the field for three weeks. Um, we also have the midterm study experiences that are um, during May that are three week long programs that go um, everywhere from Colombia to Hawaii to Jeff leads a, a program in Spain every couple of years. Uh, the, um, so, so there are, there are programs that are, are everywhere from a weekend long to three weeks long. And then we also partner with a number of really fantastic international study abroad programs really closely um, that give students an opportunity. The one that I'm most familiar with that I partner most closely with is this program called Round River Conservation Studies. Um, and they, um, they're accredited through Westminster and they run programs in Northern Canada and in Botswana and Patagonia um, and on the southern border as well. So um, we, uh, we've worked really hard to, to give students opportunities to, um, to, to have experiences like this, if, even if the expedition isn't the one for them for a variety of reasons. If they are only available to go away for a week or a weekend, there are opportunities um, available for that as well. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, other other questions? If not, um, Jeff, I don't know if you want to add any more to that. Yeah. Talk about so, so I was just going to talk about the uh, the outdoor education and leadership, especially does uh, 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 a number of both short term and they've done uh, uh, semester long trips. Um, ours is you have the opportunity to do things like hiking, uh, but we don't do we don't go mountain climbing. We don't do do those sort of more adventurous things, which our OEL program absolutely does and teaches. Uh, students how to how to lead those kinds of trips. Um, so there's a big variety, academic, uh, outdoor, nearly always a, a, a combination. They all have a strong academic basis. Um, alum, students, Kara, Maddie, Bridger, do you have any sort of final words you'd like to say as we start to wrap up? No, um, I, I, I'll i say I think it's it's a great trip and also just Westminster as a whole really encompasses a lot of the things that the expedition does. Um, and I think Jeff and Brent got at that when they were talking about all the trips that you can go on that are smaller or shorter. Um, but the place place learning idea is really encompassed at Westminster and I, I was really happy with with the education and the experiences that I had while I was there. Um, I've put uh, I've put both my email address and Jeff's email address in the chat. So if you have any further questions, um, feel free to contact us and we can get back to you. And then um, there's also uh, there's also a link to the podcast that Bridger mentioned earlier and the way to find that um, there's a link in the chat. But if you don't have access to that, the, the link is it's podcast.mountainresearch.org slash 10. And that's a podcast that um, it's an episode that pretty much compiles student stories about the expedition and their experiences um, so you can get a sense of what that's all about as well. Um, any other questions or comments at this point? Well, I think we'll wrap up then. Um, a big thank you to our panel and to all of you for uh, joining us. And we hope you'll attend our upcoming lunch lunchtime sessions on Westminster's unique and meaningful programming for students in March as well. We'll be sending out email invites um, in the coming weeks. And if you do have any Westminster related questions, um, like Brent said, we've got your email contact information in the chat. Um, so thanks again and enjoy the rest of your day.